Hey everyone, my name is Danielle Rodwell, and I just wanted to share a little bit of my story. Um, I grew up in Philadelphia, <laughs> my hometown where I live. I have not lived anywhere else, well, except for when I went to college, but for the most part, I'm from Philadelphia. Um, I guess I can start like all the way back which is the story of, I guess, just me, my little brother, he's two years younger than me. Um, basically, my earliest memories were, I was with my, my birth mom. I remember um, she struggled with drugs, and I have a few memories, memories of my dad. Um, I knew he probably struggled with drugs, and I think um, alcohol. And I just remember being with my mom as a toddler. Um, I remember being with some of my aunts on my dad's side sometimes and my aunts on my mom's side whenever my mom couldn't uh, take care of my brother and I. And she really, she really battled with drugs, um, which resulted in me eventually, by the age of about four or five, um, going to foster care, fill up the foster care system. Um, I guess one of the youngest memories I have, um, one of my family members, or being one of my family members, in my mom's absence, um, I was molested by one of my uh, family members. <laughs> um, she was a teenager herself, so I don't know, I don't know. You know what the situation was with that but I was probably about three or four years old when that went on and um, I remember people coming to m my house with my mom and like showing me a chart thing with like a child's body and I remember showing them like where I was touched and describing what was done and thinking I was gonna get in trouble cuz I thought I was gonna get in trouble if I told somebody you know at that age um, did that whole thing, was back with my mom, and at one point, I remember living with my dad, and the house was like, I remember it was no banister in the house, I remember um, being beat badly by somebody in the house, and I remember, um, being taken away from my dad's house. I remember my aunt coming to get me one time and basically packing me and my brother up in the car saying she was going to take us and, you know, arguing with my dad or, you know, probably laying him out for not doing everything he was supposed to do. And I remember living with my aunt. You know, she had two kids of her own, but she took really good care of my brother and I. And we were like her kids, not just her niece and nephew. And I remember one day packing up all our stuff, going to the car, and being taken downtown where our mom met us there and explained to us that she was sick and she couldn't take care of us and that she would be um, leaving us in the care of someone who would who would love us and take care of us until she got herself better and I remember not being mad at my mom I understood what she was saying I didn't know it was drugs per se but I did think that she was sick and um, holding my brother's hand and telling him, you know, everything's gonna be okay, and we're gonna have a new mommy. <laughs> and that's what I said. I was young, not to replace my mom, but I said, we're gonna have a new mommy. And um, I think I was probably four or five at the time when I went into foster care. And the Lord blessed, cause we met a beautiful, wonderful woman named Simonia, who basically br brought us up like we were her own kids, like loved on us you couldn't tell her she didn't birth us you couldn't tell her anything she took care of us and um she was older she was old enough probably to be our grandma um but which was valuable to me because since she was old school she knew how to cook she knew how to sew she knew how to do all kinds of stuff and she taught me how to do that so i got a lot of great skills from you know being raised by her and let me think of what else all right so just to finish or continue rather um so my mom my new mom 
and not my new mom, my other mom, <laughs> I called her mommy, um, Simonia, had my brother and I. Um, she introduced us to the Lord, um, taking us to church. We were in church probably four times out of the week, you know, Bible study, prayer, regular Sunday service, new members class, Bible Institute, Bible school, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. And it wasn't something that she had to drag us to because we really, we really enjoyed it. Um, and even at home, she took the time to have Bible studies with us, um, got me my first children's Bible and, and just did a whole bunch of stuff, uh, invested a lot of time in us. And, um, you know, it was a struggle for her. I look back at it and I look like, wow, she, she was patient. <laughs> she went or put up with a lot of stuff because I know uh, as far as me, I acted out. I used to have tantrums. I used to have horrible tantrums. I mean, probably because I had, you know, trouble childhood before I came into foster care. And she, you know, mm, she dealt with a lot. Like, so much so that by the time I got to fifth grade, it was when my behavior really started improving. Like, I got the most improved student award when I graduated. <laughs> Not because my grades, I had good grades, but my behavior used to be like off the wall. And I never like started trouble, but I would respond like really dramatically to certain things and and just, you know, have tantrums and kind of flip out or whatever. And um, she she got me out of here. My mom, do not spare the ride. <laughs> she got me out of here, but it was, it was love. And that's the reason why, you know, I don't have those kind of issues today as an adult. Um... I mean, that happened. I went to middle school, straight A's, honor society. She was uh, super involved in everything. She came to every parent-teacher meeting, everything, you know, that a parent was supposed to be at at school. She was there, had me in Girl Scouts, my brother in Boy Scouts, and she just did a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff for us. Had us really super involved. Um, and she really, she was the first person who told me I could sing. And I thought she was just telling me it because I was a daughter. I didn't know I could sing. She was the first person that told me I could. And she, like, nurtured it. And, and she could sing herself. So she really um, helped me. She had me up at nights practicing if I had to sing somewhere, rehearsing. I used to be so mad. I used to be tired. She was like, you know, Danielle, you got to do this. You got to be able to sing even when you're tired. You got to be able to do this. And, you know, and she really invested in me with, as far as that kind of stuff. And and she she was the one <laughs> that did that. So I thank her for that. Um, had a wonderful family. Um, my mom's had two daughters and a son. They were older, of course. They were old enough to be my parents, but those are my brothers and sisters. And they really um, loved on us. My grandma really loved on us. And we just felt a part of the family. And by the time I was 12, she adopted us. She adopted us. Um, my mom would visit us. My biological mother would come. She would visit my, my birth family was really involved in visits and taking us out and doing things for us and um and my mom she just wasn't she was still out there that's a, addiction is a hard thing it's a struggle and I, I didn't resent her I kind of just felt you know like I had to pray for her and I felt like I was concerned about her but I didn't resent her so you know she tried it's a hard thing addiction's a hard thing and she didn't you know get clean in time so we got adopted we wanted to be adopted so it was awesome uh i'll never forget the judge at the court he gave us like a two dollar bill i was so hyped because i'd never seen one before and you know we were really excited but it was a good day it was a great day and then um march around march 2001 I was in eighth grade. I was going to be graduating in June. And I remember that um, my mom, my mom, Simonia, she was sick. And we thought she had, like, ammonia or something like that because she usually wasn't in the hospital. She usually was doing well. And she never really had any major health problems. So it was a regular day. I mean, she was in the hospital. We expected her to come home. And one particular morning, March 1st, 2001, I remember being at school, talked to her that morning, um, her daughter, was there, <clears throat> my youngest daughter was there watching me and my brother, you know, while we were at school, while she was at the hospital. And I remember talking to her that morning, and the doc she told us the doc said she was doing well, she'd be home soon, and she loved us, and stuff like that. Everything was cool. 
went to school, supposed to go on a trip that day. And I remember um, waiting for a phone call, waiting in my class for a phone call so I can go down to the office and go on my trip. I was super excited going out. It was something that only certain students could go on and I was hyped. And I got the call. I used to be a glass house 